In this video, I want to show you how you can use the display on the M5 stack dial. Here's my hardware. We've got the M5 stack dial, a temperature humidity sensor, a couple of relays and a solenoid. And they're all connected together and I'll show you how shortly. This is the flow code program. Um, and here on the panel, I have the display and the display is a GC9801A. It's 240 by 240 pixels. It's a round display, but you address it just like it's a square display. So you've got X is not to 240, Y is not to 240. Um, the connections are here and it's an SPI display. You can see the Mozzie and MISO connections and you can see both the GPIO on the, M on the ESP32 and you can see it's port reference uh, as well there. In flow code, we use both of those. So those are the connections. Um, on the panel, also, you can see that we have a PWM component connected to GPIO 9. This is the backlight. If you don't activate the backlight, your display will be dark. So you have to issue some, issue some commands to tell it to turn the backlight on, which we'll do in the program. We also have a bitmap drawer. In our design, there's a small padlock bitmap and you basically point flow code to that using this property here and the bitmap is compiled into the memory um, along with the rest of the program when you, com when you compile it. So our basic panel consists of the display, a PDRM component and a bitmap drawer component. If I just simulate the display for you, then you'll see how it works. So you can see we've drawn a purple background. We've drawn the little padlock. Uh, we've drawn some text and a few lines and shapes. And let's go over the program and look at how that works. This is the entire program. You first of all have to initialize both the display and the backlight or enable the backlight and this sets up the connections inside the M5 stack dial appropriately. Then we set the duty of the PWM appropriately so that we can see the backlight. Then what we do is we set a foreground color and that's this purple color here. And we've declared constants rather than using the numbers. So we've got purple, red, purple, green, and purple, blue. And that saves me from having to remember what the values of the different colors are. And we've done that for the orange as well. Then what we're doing is we're drawing a rectangle and we're drawing a rectangle from 00 to 240, 240. Um, and it's not transparent and it is solid. And that is basically the purple background. Then we display the bitmap at 8080. Um, then we set the foreground color to orange. Again, we've declared constants. Then we print the words M5 stack dial we draw a line and then we draw a rectangle. So you can see that constructing text and shapes is really very straightforward with flow code. You just have to know the X, Y dimensions of the shapes and whereabouts they are on the display. So let's just put that uh, together here. If I just plug the USB lead in, you can see the program drawing on the display. And you'll find that the flow code simulation is very faithful to what you get in real life. So the display is quite straightforward. It just consists of lots of commands to draw text and shapes, and you set the colors appropriately. And you've also got to set the fonts. Let me just show you the fonts. In the properties of the display, oh, let me minimize that for you here. So on the right hand side, you can see the properties of the display and the fonts are given numbers and you just select the fonts that you want from the font table. And you can see there's a whole bunch of fonts there. There should be more than enough fonts for most applications. Um, there are about five fonts in this application, in the final application. The fonts are referred to by numbers, but we give them constant names and you'll see that later on. So the fonts are very easy to set up as well. Okay, thank you.